Um, so thank you for your interest. Welcome to our first webinar of 2022. Uh, it's uh, seeming to be quite popular still these webinars. We wondered if people are still kind of uh, into Zoom stuff, but apparently Zoom is still a thing. And uh, there seems to be quite a lot of interest perhaps in the subject of uh, climate action creation care, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so um, we do have a large number of people registered and a lot to cover. So we will have opportunity for questions and answers, but we're gonna ask you to make sure that you keep those in the chat. Uh, and uh, Suzanne and Janice and I will be kind of keeping our eyes open on the chat just to uh, make sure that uh, we capture those questions and try and answer, we can answer in the chat as we go, but uh, we will have two points kind of within the session where we can uh, handle some Q&A. So as you have your questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. Uh, also, um, just a, um, we will have a, a, a short section in our Sabbath rest uh, where we'll do a little bit of journaling if you're so interested. Uh, and a bit of a self reflect like um, individual reflection and journaling. So if you have a, a pen or pencil and paper handy, that would be great. Um, if you want to participate in that uh, part of the activity, or you can sit and reflect silently, that's up to you too. But uh, we, uh, hopefully you do have and can grab a, a writing implement and something to write on. Uh, so what we will be doing <clears throat> today is uh, doing a little bit of a brief introduction of our uh, education focus on uh, creation care climate action. Uh, and uh, Janice will walk us through a little bit of the where you can find um, the resources on our website. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, four learning modules that have been created up to now. Uh, we uh, kind of silently produced one, two, and three. Some of you have found them and used them. Um, and uh, so Janice will walk us through and sort of explain how this fits into context. And then uh, Suzanne is basically going to walk us through and workshop this uh, module four. So we'll walk through some of the components. We will not um, be kind of going through and doing every activity and you'll see why when we start going through that there's it's intended to be a pretty flexible uh, uh, module that you can use as a group or independently and there's many ways of going about it so we'll sort of introduce you uh, we will be having a reflection which is part of the module from uh, the reverend canon kathy campbell uh, will uh, participate in, and share her reflection as well uh, and uh, and we'll just sort of walk through some of the exercises together uh, so a little bit of an introduction to, uh, oh, and we will be hearing from uh, Mike Zimmering, who will be uh, talking a little bit about um, the give section, but you'll see where that comes in a little later as well. Uh, so um, our presenters today, we have the Reverend Kathy, sorry, the Reverend Canon Kathy Campbell uh, is a former academic and retired Anglican priest uh, who lives in Winnipeg. She is uh, strongly committed to social justice sustainable development uh, and uh, food security and has written uh, quite extensively on food security uh, and social justice uh, issues uh, and is very much active in the um, uh, Anglican Grow Hope, which is an initiative or a partnership with the Canadian Food Grants Bank uh, in the Diocese of Rupert's Land. And she is our uh, uh, CFGB representative to our board. So. Uh, we welcome Kathy. Uh, Suzanne Rumsey, for any of you who might not know, Suzanne is our um, public engagement coordinator. Uh, she has been with PWRDF since 2001, first as the Latin, Ameri or the, um, Latin America and Caribbean uh, programs coordinator, and then since 2010 in her current role as the um, uh, public engagement coordinator. Uh, and she is currently working on her um, master's in theology through uh, Trinity College uh, and uh, is um, living in downtown Toronto with her son Robin who shows up in different ways in our presentations uh, and then my colleague Janice Bean who I'm going to pass it over to in a second is our communications coordinator uh, has been with PWRDF for five years now uh, and does um, uh, a lot around our website uh, publications under the sun email updates um, 
videos, basically any helpful communication tool that you may have used uh, is uh, partly because of Janice's work. So uh, without further ado, I will pass it on to Janice. Thanks so much, Kim. Um, okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Um, I am going to bring up the, um, the resource now, or I'm gonna bring up the website, I should say. I, I wanna first situate you as to how to find this resource. And um, one thing I've learned as a communications coordinator is that uh, there are many ways <laughs> people access information in all kinds of different ways. So I wanna to try to give you a few different ones. So the first one is just to go to our website. Um, so I'll even just go back one to home. So here is our website. And if you can think about going to get involved, so we have the, our nav bar across the top here. So you go to get involved and then scroll down. And then you see the first orange box here that says promote PWRDF, book a speaker, view our creation care climate action resources. So that will help you. And then you're gonna click on that and scroll down all these wonderful promotional tools that Kim so kindly mentioned. Uh, and then, so here is the information about our education focus, uh, which is, so this module is part of, um, is part of year one, which is part of the three-year program. It's sort of like the turducken of education resources. So, um, so to access year one learning modules, you click here. Now, I really wanna show you um, this other little trick though. If, you can, if that seems like, oh, there's too much navigating, I'm never gonna remember that, Janice. Um, you can just check out the, the URL up here. You can just go to pwrdf.org slash creation hyphen care, okay? And that will bring you right to that page. Um, so write that down or um, I can put that in the chat later or hopefully you'll just uh, remember that. So. Um, and so looking here, we have a, a little timeline that we've created just to kind of remind you of all the other parts of this year one focus. Um, because we decided to focus on um, food security, we um, uh, decided to um, really kind of set it in the liturgical calendar as well as the agricultural calendar. Um, which funnily enough, uh, there, there are some nice connection points. Um, I wonder why that is. So we have um, three, we produced three other resources that were released uh, April, August, and October. Um, and according to these, uh, these different seasonal, uh, seasonal points. And so here we are now at January, 2020 at um, Sabbath rest. And in March will be the final one, which is uh, called waiting and preparing. And this one will be about disaster, prepare, disaster preparedness and the impact that um, climate related disasters have on food security, which you can imagine is a negative impact. Um, so, um, so we're at this page of climate uh, of creation care and let's just scroll down here are all the learning modules, go to learning module one, two, three, and four. And then finally we have learning module number four, Sabbath rest, go to learning module number four. Now, so I told you, you could do pwrdf.org slash creation hyphen care. You could also just do this, pwrdf.org slash Sabbath hyphen rest, okay? So for those of you keeping track, that was three ways to find this resource. Um, and, so I think we are now at, look at that, right on time, that I can now uh, introduce um, my colleague, Suzanne, who will um, begin by taking us through this resource from the, uh, from the table of contents. So Suzanne, let me know if you want, uh, how you want me to scroll here. I'll, I'll give you the signal as we go. <clears throat> Thanks, Janice, and, and welcome everyone. It's so wonderful to see so many of you. And we're a bit mystified as to why over a hundred of you have joined us and over 175 registered. So if, if you want to pop in the chat, what brought you to this workshop? We'd really like to know. So thanks for being here. Could I just, uh, sorry, am I still, oh yeah. Can I just make one reminder there? Just uh, Kim, I don't know that you mentioned about the live transcript. Did you mention that, that people can access that? I did not, but um, somebody did remind me, so it should be enabled now. So if you feel like you want to use the live 
uh, I think you just need to click on your own um, right. bar. If you're having trouble hearing. Thanks, Janice, good point. And that is on my screen down at the bottom, a little square that says CC, I guess for closed captioning and under it live transcript. So let's, um, let's begin. The Oxford English Dictionary defines Sabbath as a day of religious observance and abstinence from work kept by Jews from Friday evening to Saturday evening and by most Christians on Sunday. The dictionary also notes that the Hebrew roots of the word are from Sabbat, to rest. But as this learning module will explore, Sabbath is also about rest for God, for the earth, and for all humankind. It's about recovery, regeneration, and renewal for God's created order. For the next hour or so, we'll walk you through the elements of the module with a view to encouraging and equipping you to use this resource on your own or with others. So to begin, if you're planning to workshop this resource, send a message to participants ahead of time, asking them to bring a symbol, image, or story of a personal experience of what Sabbath means to them. As well, as we've done, ask them to have a pen and paper handy for journaling. Just to walk you briefly through the table of contents, which is also our process for today, and it follows a similar pattern in all of the previous modules. The module begins with an opening prayer, introductions and sharing symbols, and then an opportunity to learn about climate change and food security from our volunteers and partners today through the lens of Sabbath rest. We also um, invite people to reflect on how scripture speaks to those issues and then to act in small and large ways to address them. There is a give section to support the vital work of PWRDF partners and then the session ends with a closing prayer. So I'm going to ask Janice now to play an audio recording of our opening prayer by UK priest and poet, the Reverend Malcolm Geit. Blessing and rest, delight in everything, sustained by your strong love and richly blessed. This is the gift you give, the day you bring, blessing and rest. This is indeed the gladness of the best, from first lines in the east where linnets sing to where the last light lingers in the west. You lift the cares to which I used to cling as you yourself descend to be my guest and show me how to find in everything blessing and rest. Having said the opening prayer together or listened to uh, Malcolm Geit offer it, um, and if you're gathered as a group, uh, you, we suggest that you invite each participant to uh, introduce themselves and share their symbol of Sabbath. If your session is taking place online, you can invite participants to uh, hold up their symbols so that others can see it. And if your session is in person, to place them on a Sabbath table at the center of your circle. Given numbers today, we won't uh, do this part of the uh, workshop, but I want to introduce you to my symbol, which is this little Robin, um, who is a stand in for my great big 17 year old Robin, who is finally back to school today. Hallelujah. Both are beautiful songbirds. And this little Robin will help us mark time during our session. So when you hear the Robin sing, after a time of quiet, it will be time to come back together. We'll move on to the learn section, which can be done again on your own or as a group. Um, there are a few elements within the learn section. The first is uh, an invitation to read uh, what Sabbath means to me, a reflection by uh, the Reverend Canon Kathy Campbell. Then to read uh, an article about PWRDF partner ECLOF, uh, which, which is supporting women farmers in Colombia, and to view a video on uh, ECLOF Kenya's work with farmers in that country. 
And finally, there's a series of questions for discussion or reflection that follow. Uh, you may also find in looking and listening that some of your own questions or observations emerge as you read and watch, and so discuss those too. We're very fortunate, grateful, and glad to have Kathy with us today, and she is going to offer us a live version of her reflection. So over to you, Kathy. Um, here are a few of my reflections on Sabbath rest offered to spur your reflections and journaling. <clears throat> there is such an integrate layering of the rhythms of life, from our heartbeats and breath to the tides and the moons waxing and waning, to the seasons created by our annual circuit around the sun. And of course, there are the less defined seasons of each of our own lives. Each living creature has its unique rhythm and together, the community of life creates the most wondrous song. So I ask, do we move in sync with this song individually and as a human community? The seven days of the week pattern our original creation story. From Genesis, we hear, at the end of the sixth day, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, <clears throat> God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. And so the pattern of work and rest is built into the rhythm of creation right at the very beginning of time. And then it's woven into the life of the community of faith. From the Ten Commandments in Exodus, we hear, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. And over time, that patterning of the week became more layered with Sabbath years and then Jubilee years, every seven by seven years. And so I ask, in our relentlessly fast, interconnected, 24 seven world, how can we retain any sense of this rhythm established at the heart of life. I know that sometimes I have the faith and hope necessary to stop and rest in a God-filled Sabbath moment. Yet sometimes my anxiety or desire to get things done gets the better of me and I just keep on working. How can we rest in our restless, crisis-filled moment? Yet our earth and our health requires, indeed it is crying out for us to take a break, to honor the Sabbath, to stop, to rest, to give time for recovery and renewal for the earth and for our own souls and bodies. To do that responsibly, knowing all our collective pressing needs and crises, we must have a deep faith and a sturdy hope that all, all is held in God's love. 
Wendell Berry, a contemporary theologian and Kentucky farmer, invites us into the heart of the mystery of the Sabbath moment. He writes, whatever is foreseen in joy must be lived out from day to day. Vision held open in the dark by our 10,000 days of work. Harvest will fill the barn, for that the hand must ache, the face must sweat. And yet, no leaf or grain is filled by work of ours. The field is tilled and left to grace, that we may reap. Great work is done while we're asleep. When we work well, a Sabbath mood rests on our day and finds it good. Our work is one small part of the great work of creation. Is our work in harmony with God's great work? We have many, many stories of the personal and ecological costs of our patterns of overconsumption, overuse, overwork. Yet, we also have stories of the healing power of a Sabbath rest for the human body and spirit and for the land itself. Think of the stories of the resilience of birds, fish, whales, forests, and the soil itself returning to life when we stop overconsuming, polluting, and overworking. In addition to healing and recovery, it is in our Sabbath moments that we can attend and tune our hearts to the great rhythms of creation and its maker. We turn and appreciate all that is more than us and our agendas. It is in our Sabbath pauses that we can learn to discern our limits, still our longings and say, Enough is enough. Is this not what it is to make the Sabbath holy? Thank you, Kathy. I now want to invite all of you to take up your pen and paper if you wish to respond to one or another of the four questions that Kathy posed in her reflection. And for those of you who might be doing this uh, as a workshop uh, with a group online, Janice has created a slide with a Sabbath image and the questions that Kathy posed. They are, do we move individually and as a human community in sync with this song of the community of life? In our relentlessly fast interconnected 24 seven world, how can we retain any sense of this rhythm established at the heart of life? Is our work in harmony with God's great work? And it is in our Sabbath moments that we can attend and tune our hearts to the great rhythms of creation and its maker, that we discern our limits, still our longings and say enough is enough. Is this not what it is to make our Sabbath holy? As you journal, and if you wish, be welcome to type words or phrases into the chat to share with others. And I will bring us back together in four minutes with my friend, the Robin.
Thanks, everyone. I hope that was helpful. I know four minutes of silence online can seem like an awful lot of silence, but we thought it important um, since we're talking about Sabbath to have some time for reflection. And there's some wonderful comments in the chat that I've been seeing people add. So please take uh, an opportunity to look at what others are, are writing and please be welcome to keep, to keep adding to that. Someone just said, my dog loved the Robin. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to, uh, we're still in the learn section and this time um, there is some learning from our partners. The stories from our partners describe in, in very concrete ways what Sabbath rest means through the lens of sustainable farming that cares for the land, for the animals and for humankind. Uh, ECLOF, the Ecumenical Church Loan Fund International, is a not-for-profit foundation based in Switzerland, and it's the hub for a network of socially driven microfinance institutions throughout the world that provide financial and non-financial services to micro entrepreneurs and smallholder farmers. In Colombia, uh, PWRDF has partnered with ECLOF in its Empowering Small-Scale Farmers and micro Entrepreneurs project that supports small scale farmers through best agricultural practices to engage in organic farming and through financial literacy training that enables those farmers to better manage loans or credits that they are granted. And I'm now gonna pass back over to Janice to introduce and run a short video for you about Ekloff Kenya. <clears throat> Thanks, Suzanne. Um, just before I do that, I do, I do just want to um, show you that you would click here and that will take you right away to an article that is uh, on our website. And that, so that would be the first uh, little bit of assignment that you would do. And then um, going back here, so I will um, play this video. It's about seven minutes long um, and it was produced by Ekloff Kenya. Uh, for us um, as a way of um, letting our, our donors and supporters know about the kind of work that they were doing. This is a slightly edited version because the original was almost an hour long. Um, and you're going to meet two uh, farmers named Esther and Mercy. And they're just two of many uh, examples of people who have benefited from the model dairy farming program. Um, Mercy is the second farmer that we will see. And I just wanted to take a second to say um, that she refers to loans that she uh, took, a series of loans that she was able to take through ECLOF. And she is speaking about um, Kenyan shillings. And the first loan that she describes is 70,000 Kenyan shillings. And just as a point of reference, that's about 769 Canadian dollars. So um, roughly, um, you know, just keep that in mind when she, it's, it sounds like the loans that she's taking are, are quite large, but uh, keep the currency conversion in mind. Um, all right, so here we go. Just give me a second. Agriculture is the mainstay of Kenya's economy. According to information from the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO of the United Nations, the sector directly contributes 26% of Kenya's gross domestic product GDP. The key sector was allocated 60 billion shillings in the 2021-2022 budget in order to spur its growth. By and large, households in the rural areas heavily depend on agriculture as a source of income, employment, and food security. FAO estimates that agriculture employs 70% of the people residing in the rural areas. Traditionally, Kenya's rural households grew food crops and kept livestock for their own consumption. This practice is known as subsistence farming. But times have changed, with the domestic budgets of the seed households growing fast on a daily basis, for instance, educating family members, agriculture has been commercialized. In that vein, farmers are growing crops and keeping 
livestock as a means of generating income. This modern practice is known as agribusiness or kilimo biashara in Kiswahili and by embracing the lives of many farmers have been transformed. To succeed in agribusiness, many progressive farmers work hand in hand with reliable financial partners. They are therefore able to benefit from financing and capacity building from such lenders as they strive to grow their enterprises. Given their ability to penetrate the far-flung corners and deep valleys of the rural areas because of their agile models, microfinance institutions are very ideal partners of farmers engaging in agribusiness. Founded in 1994, Eklof Kenya is a microfinance institution that provides financial and non-related financial services to the economically vulnerable communities in all sectors of Kenya's economy. Field visits to Embu and Nyandarua offer a very clear picture of how the innovative dairy farming project has transformed the farmers' lives. In the demo farms, highly intensive smallholder dairy production systems, also known as zero grazing units, have been put up with financial and technical support from Eklof Kenya. The dairy cows are fed with fodder crops grown by the farmers, hence increasing the production of milk and cutting down the cost of buying commercial animal feeds, among other benefits. This development is in sharp contrast with the poorly constructed cow sheds that the farmers owned before Eklof Kenya's intervention. One of the outstanding demo farms under this project is owned by Mrs. Esther Muthoni Njogu from Embu County. Very meticulous in her work, Esther is a focused and successful farmer. My name is Esther Muthoni Njogu. I was trained as an agricultural extension officer in 1980 and I was posted to work in the field as, an, as a field extension uh, worker. I used to train farmers in all aspects con concerning agriculture. I've worked in a few districts. I've worked, first of all, I worked in Busia. I came to Nyandarwa district in central Kenya, Nyeri, and finally Ebu. I started dairy farming since 1992 on a small scale one or two cows. And then I started serious farming in the year 2009, whereby I increased animals from two to five, seven, nine, and I continued adding, adding until they were almost 22. Esther is very passionate about dairy farming because it is a well-paying venture. It is uh, a second to coffee commercial farming. That's where you can get a lot of, okay, a lot of income. You can get manure and you can get havers for sale and for breeding. She has employees who assist her in looking after the cows. It started way back in 2016. I've benefited a lot. For one, they are very cooperative and they are very good to farmers. Uh, they offer us loans to promote our daily farming. In 2016, she hosted a field day in her demo farm in order to educate farmers on the best agribusiness practices. It was organized by Ecroff in collaboration with the Superior Hyrad and uh, other stakeholders. It attracted very many farmers from various parts of Ebu. The attendance was about 300 farmers who really were happy and they really said they benefited from the teaching because we had invited stakeholders from Ministry of Agriculture, from Ministry of Cooperatives, from Superior Highland and the other stakeholders. So farmers were encouraged to improve on their daily farming and the other kinds of farming. From daily farming, I get a lot of manure to improve on my coffee farming. And I get income because I've bought about two vehicles from dairy farming. I've educated my children from dairy farming. And it has continued to improve on my upkeep. A good number of smallholder farmers in Embu County who have received training from the demo farms have in turn established highly successful enterprises. One of them is Masi Karemi Ireri from Kawanjara. My name is Masi Karemi Ireri from Kawanjara Commercial Village, where we take our own of aircraft. I entered aircraft in 2017 
whereby I've been able to do so many things through the run. The first run I was servicing, it was of 70,000, whereby I was able to construct the cow shed and I bought a shaft cutter. After that, I took the second run, which was 150, whereby I bought a cow. I got another run of 200,000, 200, whereby I was able to buy a, a motor, which I used for pumping water, and I bought another cow for the second time. Karemi's dairy farming enterprise is profitable. From the proceeds of her milk, she has, for instance, been able to educate two of her children up to the university. Through the training, which I've got through the aircraft, I'm able to upgrade my livestock production because I'm able to put my cows the right breed, which is supposed to, to upgrade to a good cow. We have a group in Kawanjara which is called Kawanjaran Group, which has around that members. And from that group, me as Masi, I'm the treasurer of the group. I've served as the treasurer of the group for around three years. And right now I'm serving as the secretary of the group because of the organization. That group has benefited from the group because we are able to appreciate to one another. If somebody is unable to pay their own, we talk and we also cooperate and we know how to solve that problem and we are able to help one another. Kawera recently sold one of her dairy cows in order to pay for her daughter's university fees. She is planning to expand her zero grazing unit in order to accommodate more cows. If you want to lift your life and if you want to uplift also your family, it is better you be together with others so that you can move. Down to earth, focused and industrious, Kawera is a strong pillar of her family and Kawanjara residents. Sabbath image uh, and questions for, for journaling and or discussion in response to our partners' perspectives. Given time again today, we won't work through those questions now, but uh, there they are for your consideration. Um, things you're learning, uh, ways that we're called to Sabbath by, by Kathy and our partners, uh, et cetera. Um, we don't want to rush you through Sabbath rest, but <laughs> we do have a, a timeline. So back to the resource and to the section we call reflect. I noticed, um, sorry, just earlier in the chat, some, someone saying that they were finding the type uh, a bit small. And I think that's that's a function of being on Zoom. I think if you were to look at this yourself on uh, uh, on the website, it would um, the um, both the type would size and clarity would be better. I did actually increase it a little bit when I, I saw that. So hopefully it's um, thanks. It's easier to read now. Thank you, Janice. So this reflect section offers four scripture passages from Genesis, Leviticus, Isaiah, and the Gospel of Mark that reflect the centrality of Sabbath throughout the biblical narrative. You may want to um, individually or with a group read all four or just choose one of the passages and then journal about or discuss the questions that follow the reading or other questions that might emerge for you. And again, if you're working with a group online, uh, Janice has created a slide with our Sabbath image again and the questions, which are, if the authors of the biblical texts were writing today, what imagery might they use to call us to Sabbath rest? What challenges would they pose about Sabbath rest to us, we who are caregivers of one another, of the land, and of God's created order in this time of climate change and for many, food insecurity? And can you think of one or more modern prophets who are speaking about these issues? What are they saying today? Again, um, this would be, if we had more time, would be a wonderful conversation to have, but we're going to uh, move on to the next section of this um, resource called ACT. How might we create space in our lives that enables, as Wendell Berry writes, a Sabbath mood to rest on our day? And as Kathy asked, how might we retain any sense of the rhythm established at the heart of life? 
The following suggested activities offer opportunities for rest and rhythm, for recovery and renewal. All of them can be done regardless of the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions in your area, we hope. <laughs> and most are intergenerational, and a number of them can be done while gathered in person or online. But before anything, let's stop. Let's stop to attend to what is happening in the world around you and the world inside you. Close your eyes for a moment and breathe deeply in and out. Listen for sounds and for silence. Breathe in and out. And now open your eyes for two minutes of Sabbath pause. For some of the suggested activities, we point you to other PWRDF resources. And we'll just uh, go through those briefly. There they are. For Pray, we invite you to join us for Praying with PWRDF, which takes place every two weeks on Thursdays. For Meditate, there are a number of meditation resources that PWRDF has produced. And Janice, would you mind just clicking on Advent One audio file there just to give people a look at what that is. And it's, as I say, it's an, just an audio file to be, uh, uh, to listen to. For you would just press this uh, play button here. Advent One meditation. Okay. And then that would start. Yeah. So those are there for you to consider. As we did today, we also suggest journaling. And when it comes to writing a poem for inspiration, we provide a link to a lovely exploration of Wendell Berry's poetry by the poet, the Reverend Malcolm Geit, who offers our opening prayer. If coloring is your thing, we have coloring pages. Janice, could you just let us have a chance to look at those? There they are. And those can be um, downloaded and printed for use. Good. Yep, just click on it here. And um, it comes up sideways. So that doesn't really matter when you print it, but if you wanted just to see it like that. There so. And you're never too old to color. I think it's a thing again. 
Um, while you're coloring, maybe take a tech fast and turn off your cell phone, computer and other devices. Just don't do that right now because uh, we need you to stay on the webinar to the end. Uh, we also suggest making a playlist of your favorite music. We've made one ourselves from some of the music gathered over the past two years for praying with PWRDF. Do you wanna just click on that, Janice, so people can see it? And there it is. So I'll just jump in. You can play any of these vid videos individually. You can also play the whole list by clicking here or and you can you can shuffle it so that it comes up in any order for those of you um, not uh, familiar with using a YouTube playlist. And that appears on our YouTube channel, doesn't it? That's right. That's where you're that's where you're going to. So if you just do PWRDF YouTube, you could find it that way too. Um, and then we suggest taking uh, time to visit family and friends, to share a meal with an elderly relative or someone who you know is food insecure, and or to take a walk in the woods or around a labyrinth. I should also mention, and I forgot to do this up at the beginning. Oh, it's down there at the bottom. You might want to try one or several of these activities to help you enter into Sabbath. And um, we invite you to use this Google form um, to share your ideas. And once you submit your suggestion, we'll, um, you'll also be able to read other people's suggestions. So if you have another activity to offer as well as your own experience of one of these activities, please, uh, please add it in and uh, that will become a kind of community Sabbath activity hub. I can just show you quickly how that works too. So you can click here and then, um, this is just like a PWRDF, but the, your email address will come up here um, and then you can type it in here as well. I just want to assure you that when we share it, people won't see your own email address. So I listen to Suzanne, that's what I do for my Sabbath. And then when you submit, it comes to this and then you can see previous responses. And so you can see that the emails are not shared, but you get a nice list. And so that's how that works. That's great. Thanks, Janice. And uh, so uh, finally, after all that activity, we invite you to, uh, to stop once again. And in so doing, um, to take the path less traveled. And don't forget to breathe. As with the other learning modules, we wanted to suggest how you might dig deeper into the theme of Sabbath rest beyond the time of, of a workshop, for example. What are the stories of Sabbath in your community where people are attending to God, to the land, to justice, and to one another, where resiliency and inner strength of community is being nurtured and built up? Search those out if you don't know and consider how you might become involved and let us know about those too. We've asked Kathy, um, who contributed the, the examples of what we're, we're trying to get at here to describe those examples for you. So I'll pass over to Kathy just now. Um, uh, wonderful to be with you all and wonderful to imagine. Uh, people thinking and engaging in Sabbath practices. Um, uh, I offered the three examples that are on the screen in front of you of pieces of land uh, in my neck of the woods, neck of Canada, that are not being used by us to suit us. They're not being worked. They're fragments of a vast tall grass prairie ecosystem that have been preserved and restored. Um, they exist in different contexts with different people caring for them. Um, but I could have found examples of wetlands or streams or waterways that have been preserved or restored. And I'm sure that you could find all sorts of examples of this kind uh, in your own context. 
And I think that that would be uh, worth um, uh, the effort in thinking about uh, that challenge. But digging deeper could also mean creating conditions for Sabbath rest for more of us. Sabbath should not be a luxury that only some can afford. So we can ask, what would Sabbath rest be for a homeless person or a single parent with a minimum wage job or for those not working, say seniors living in assisted or extended living situations? As Rachel Held Evans says, all, all Sabbath is rest, but not all rest is Sabbath. So what makes rest Sabbath? Makes rest a meaningful time, a holy time. And how can we cr create conditions for Sabbath rest for more of us? What creates Sabbath rest? And what makes it almost impossible for us individually, but us for the community around us, the human community around us, and us as the community of life in our particular place. So there's lots to dig deeper about. Thanks so much, Kathy. I think we need to add your questions to that section. They're good ones. Um, finally, under ACT, you'll see two advocacy activities um, th that are versions of um, similar activities in the previous modules. Uh, one is uh, through the Canadian Food Grains Bank and the other through the Ecumenical for the Love of Creation campaign. And PWRDF is an active member of both of those uh, organizations and initiatives. So I um, commend those to you. I'm going to now pass over to our colleague, Mike Zimmerink, who is PWRDF's fundraising and donor relations facilitator. And he's going to say a word about the hows of giving to support the work of our partners um, in response to climate change and food security. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Suzanne, and thanks, um, Janice, Kim, and Kathy, for the wonderful webinar so far. Um, I just wanted to quickly go over the different ways that you can uh, support this work or um, instruct others, or if others have questions on how you can support the work, um, we can just quickly go over that. Janice, I don't think I'm a host. Do you mind sharing the Gift Today page? Um, <clears throat> I don't mind at all. Merci beaucoup. This is like very high brain power though in order to do that mike i'm so sorry <laughs> hey can you do some work here uh, awesome thank you um so this is the give today page um there was a link to it on the resource um page that we were just on but it's also always accessible wherever you are on the website on the top right hand corner um and as you scroll down here you can see um, we have a number of different buckets or programs that you can donate to. Um, climate care is, of course, there on the left hand side um, with our lots of other programs. So that's how you can donate online via our website. Using these forms, you can donate with a Visa card, MasterCard, or directly from your bank account. Um, if you want to donate to us through American Express, the only way to do that online is through Canada Helps. Um, so again, these are the online forms where you can use Visa, MasterCard, or your personal bank account. If you are donating on behalf of a church or other group, uh, we can't issue you a tax receipt. So there is a form on the Give Today page that's specifically labeled. Um, if you're donating on behalf of a group or a uh, church, please choose that um, one. If we could go back to the Give Today page, Janice, um, just so I can make sure everyone sees where the church button is. Great. Um, so there you have donate where the needs are greatest and then donate on behalf of the group. 
So that's where you'd go if you're donating from your church. And directly above that, um, we have, um, just went away there for a second, thank you. Um, just above that, we have my information there, my phone number. Um, you have my cell phone number there, it's a Toronto area number. You can call me and make a donation with Visa or MasterCard anytime um between nine and five monday to friday typically um and then our 1-800 number is there um as well where you can leave a voicemail um we are of course as you can see still working from home um so you will have to leave a voicemail on that number but i do check that a couple times a day and um should get back to you in a couple hours after you leave a voicemail um and our address is there as well um for you to send a check um, if you are sending a check and you want to support this work for climate care, all you have to do is in the memo line of the check, if you could just write climate care, or if you are designated to one of our other programs, um, Canadian Food Grains Bank, Indigenous programs, just, just jot that down on the memo line of the check. Um, and that's all you have to do to make sure we get it to the correct place. Um, so I think that touches on just about everything. Unless there's any other questions, I will um, wrap it up and send it back to Suzanne. Thanks so much, Mike. And yes, if people do have questions about um, uh, any of that, um, Mike is your person to ask. Let us pray. Oh. For your word made known in the breaking of bread. For the companionship of the stranger. For the one who meets us in the gap between an ending and a beginning. Opening, to the, opening the past to understanding and the future to new directions, we give thanks and pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For your promise of restoration and healing, justice and peace, challenging us to live boldly into question marks of our times. For the sharp spotlight your promised judgment casts, on the tangled issues of our day. For the light of your presence coming towards us in love, we give thanks and pray, come Lord Jesus. Let us bring uh, all of who we are to you. Open the treasures of our history to us. Heal the fissures of our memory Teach us to trust the truth to set us free and the power of love to reconcile. Help us to live in the present with all its ambiguity and tension. Without rushing into a future of our own making or accepting a future of someone else's design. Free us from the tyranny of clocks and calendars, pagers and telephones. To meet you in the here and now, to hear your voice and the beat of your heart, to keep the Sabbath holy and to order our work to your purposes. Ready us for the day of your coming. Teach us to read the signs of the times the recipes of the banquet. Enroll us in the school of Kairos. Instruct us in the temple of your walk. For all time is yours. You are the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega, yet as present as our breath. You are our heart's desire and home. In you, all creation finds rest, completion, and replenishment. We wait for you. We hold the present open for your redemption. We trust in the justice and mercy of your judgment, in your plan for the fullness of time revealed in the word. Song of the universe, rhythm of life, and pregnant interruption. Host of the banquet, bread of life, kitchen fire. Hallowed be your name. All praise and glory is yours, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. And that prayer was written by Kathy. Thank you so much, Kathy. <laughs>